Hi, good evening, everyone. Shh. Good evening. Welcome to Karen at the Cupola. My name is Tim Hodges. I oversee uh, community relations for Care One. We're really excited that you're here. How many people here knew that this was assisted living week in the United States? Come on, Care One people. I hope. Okay. So it's especially great that we're having this event and a lot of awesome events throughout the Care One family of care centers this week. Um, certainly at the Cupola. Um, the theme, the national theme for assisted living week this week is a family of caring. Every year they pick a different theme. And what's really awesome about that this year is that we're a family run company. And in light of the recent hurricanes and tragedies, I know I for one am, have been thinking about five years ago with Hurricane Sandy and all the things we did as a company to pull together and band together to make sure we had zero interruption in our care centers. And I'm proud to say that's exactly what happened. We have 32 facilities throughout New Jersey and we worked day and night. A lot of us lived in our care facilities to ensure that we were doing our jobs, making sure that our residents were safe, that they had food, that they weren't in puddles of floods, and we had zero incidents. So I'm not looking for applause, but I would ask that we take a moment of silence for the residents who passed away, if you saw the news yesterday in the nursing homes in Florida, uh, that should never happen, and our hearts go out to them. Okay, so before we start, I wanted to thank our executive director, Lisa Sullivan at the Cupola. She's been with us for 20 years, Lisa. So she's a big part of our family, as are all the employees tonight. I've been here for 18 years at Care One. There's a long tradition of longevity, and there's a long tradition of, of hiring the best and the brightest in our industry. We're really lucky to have the gentleman who oversees rehab services for Care One with us tonight, Ian Oppel. He's in the back. He's our VP of Rehab. And I don't know if Kelly left the room, but Kelly is our regional rehab manager who's a big part of our success here at the Cupola. There's Kelly. Hi, Kelly. And then, and then Robert Clark, who does all of our rehab education for the company, is here as well. And I also wanted to just say a couple words about Care One. We have 32 care facilities. This was our flagship community that started the company. The Strauss family purchased this building in 1999, and it was then, and it continues to be our hallmark facility. The care here is phenomenal. The environment is phenomenal. The staff here is phenomenal, so we're really, really proud of what we do here and of our team, and again, we thank them. We are uh, also, because we're so successful, in two months around the corner, opening up our latest Care One facility, which is going to be called Care One Harmony Village at Paramus. And I invite everybody here in a couple of months to come to our open house. Whether you like it or not, you're on our mailing list now. <laughs> and you'll get an invitation. But that, that will be the first assisted living community um, in northern New Jersey, all of northern New Jersey, dedicated to people living with Alzheimer's disease and memory impairment. And we'll have accommodations for 120 residents. There'll be four neighborhoods to keep it intimate um, with all different levels of functioning, but it's gonna be specializing in Alzheimer's and memory impairment, but the environment is going to be like a five-star hotel. So it's a dignified, specialized environment, and we're really proud. Our administrator, I'd ask her to stand up, is Cindy Valancourt. Cindy? Yeah. <laughs> And our marketing director is John Albanese. So they'll be living in a trailer for the next two months. I know they're really excited about that. Um, we have a lot of interest, and they'll be helping develop the waiting list for people to move in, so, so we're really excited. 
And then, uh, last but not least, I just wanted to plug our company, um, especially during these philanthropic times. And um, I'm proud to tell you that Care One this year was named the Corporation of the Year by the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Um, as we raised $1.5 million for Make-A-Wish New Jersey this year through our fundraising efforts and our, the owner of our company, Daniel Strauss, was named Humanitarian of the Year. So, <laughs> thank you. Now on to our event. We, before we have our guest speaker, Dana, that we're all excited about hearing from, we wanted to show you a new program that is tied into the lecture this evening uh, that, that was developed here with Ian and his team along with Lisa and Kelly called Forever Fit. Do you guys like that name? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right? And that blends in well with Care One's culture of wellness and health and education at any age. That is the spirit of Care One. So if you wouldn't mind, we have a very short video explaining our program and we welcome you to take a tour afterwards to see the gym if you haven't, meet the therapist, and um, here we go. Forever Fit started with a conversation about our residents. Um, you know, we started off with a focus group of residents and families, and we talked about, you know, what is important to you? Tell me about your goals. And what the residents and the families kept coming back to was, you know, how can I maintain my independence? How can I be stronger? How can I continue to live a long and healthy life? So Care One took a real team approach to create our Forever Fit program. Um, and we recognized that although we had a daily exercise class, we were missing a piece. And the studies that are out there with strength training show that, you know, it not only maintains independence, but it helps the residents live longer. Group exercise is an excellent way for the older adult to stay active. However, there are some barriers that one-on-one -on -one training has an advantage over. So this is where Forever Fit comes into play. Forever Fit is a strength training program that's personalized to each and every individual's needs and goals. And we conduct an initial assessment in order to identify past pertinent medical history, their strength training needs, cardiorespiratory needs, balance and flexibility as well. And after each session, we reevaluate to track progress. And on a monthly basis, we conduct the initial assessment once again to see the broad image of how well they're doing in the progression. And we make modifications accordingly. I enjoy the one-on-one. -on -one. I do it with my arms, with my legs, which I never did before, which is a big, big thing at my age. I'm doing better and better, and uh, the exercise is fine. So the beauty of the Forever Fit program is that each and every exercise can be modified so that it can be done by any individual's condition or physical status. For instance, those that are wheelchair bound who can't get into the chair of the exercise machines can perform TheraBand exercise, free weight exercise. Everything can be replicated that the machine does via different modalities of exercise. The equipment has been designed for those of us who are in rehabilitation. When you're using the resistance bands, it's very difficult to adjust them. Whereas with the machine, if you set it for, say, 42 pounds or 38 pounds, you've got that over the entire range. I've had a stroke. I've got some uh, issues with the left side but uh, I feel that I'm progressing further. I mean, if I can have more movement in my left leg and my left arm, sure. I mean, it's helped me re achieve as much as I possibly can under the circumstances. We are always looking to be a step ahead to keep our residents independent. We're seeing an individual who wants to strength train, who is involved in nutrition, who wants to live a holistic lifestyle. We have a farm to table approach. We started that two years ago. All of the chefs here are culinary trained. We're creating everything from scratch. We want to eat healthy. We want to eat clean. And the residents and families have told us that that's also what they want. And it's our job to deliver. It gives me great satisfaction as an exercise trainer of the Forever Fit program, knowing that this program increases their overall quality of life, 
in all the physical, mental, and social aspects. And overall, these individuals are happier, more self-satisfied, and feel this extra exuberance to live their life to the fullest. The Forever Fit program has increased my balance, my strength, my endurance, my independence, and I love it. That's the one thing I don't ever want to give up, is my independence. Well, I like the training classes, the exercise. It's nice. It's, it's good for me to, you know, I guess it, it takes care of my muscles. Working out makes me feel better about myself, and it's positive, and it's helping me to get to my goal. An exercise class at Care One is very good. It allows me to do whatever I want to do. And I do it if I can. Everybody is great, and they're great to me, and I'm great to them. I love it. So I often get asked, what differentiates Care One from every other assisted living? And to me, it's easy. It's longevity. It's personalized service. It's a well-maintained and oiled machine. You know, we handpick our staff that works here for us, and we believe in a lot of training. You know, we train to meet our residents' needs. You know, Care One is very innovative when it comes to different types of programming. Look at, look at what we're building here. You know, you aren't going to find a Forever Fit program in any other assisted living, but we believe in that, and we want to in invest in the equipment. We want to invest in our people that are, that are doing the training because we believe the end result is going to equal a more independent, vibrant, confident resident, and that's what it's all about. There's truly a reason why we call this Care One. And I'd just like to introduce one of the stars of the video, Nick, who runs our exercise physiology. Thank you, thank you. That is an extremely handsome trainer in that video, I have to say. Uh, thank you so much for coming out. I've been with the Forever Fit program from day zero. So from scratch, we created this program with Ian Apple, David Dobb, Robert Clark, Tim Hodges, Lisa Rhodes, and now we have a new member, Chelsea. Uh, Roja, she's also another exercise physiologist with me. Kelly, of course, thank you for all your input and advice. Uh, thank you for coming out here. I don't know if you checked out our gym already, but that is the Forever Fit Gym. So what you saw in this video is here at the Cupola, at the Assisted Living. And the beauty of this is that not only can we help those residents here, we are reaching out and beyond our walls to the community to help train older adults and geriatrics to keep your independence up, your quality of life up. You know, what we're really trying to do here is make a difference. And our target is the 60 and over because Chelsea and I, we have extensive background, education and knowledge. I have a master's degree in clinical exercise physiology. Chelsea from William Passion as well. And we're really, really excited to make a big difference in the older adult population. So here with us today, I have two of our star residents from our program. They've been with us for about two months, and we've seen incredible change in their function. It's just miraculous. So I'm going to introduce somebody to you. She's been training with me, again, for over two months. Her name is Sue Ann Agenson. She was wheelchair-bound initially, and now she's up using the cane, and she's walking like a champ. Sue Ann, why don't you stand on up, honey? Go ahead, Sue Ann, you can turn around. So this is Sue Ann. Sue Ann, why don't you tell everybody your age, sweetheart? My name is Sue Ann Atchison. I'll be 76 on October 1st. 76. Excellent. She's incredible. Now, Sue Ann, you enjoyed coming to Forever Fit, right? Because once you completed your therapy, you really had no place to go. And what we try and do is we specialize in individualized exercise training. So now they have an option, our residents as well as the older adults in the community, to come to a specialized gym just for geriatric and older adult populations. And that's why we're so unique, and that's our niche here. We want to make a difference in that population. So how do you like coming to our gym, Sue Ann? I like the program because it, it is continuing to help me walk farther places, to stand better, as you can see now, and to um, get stronger. Right. Right. And, and she's incredible. For, I'll give you an example. She just went to church the other day, right? And 
your friend happened to mention something. There's these things called stairs, and man, are they troublesome. But Sue Ann, Sue Ann, how did that go when you're walking up the stairs? The elevator in our church broke down about three weeks ago. <laughs> so um, what were we going to do? So one of my friends, I said to one of my, my friends, I said, take my cane, and I'll hold on to the banister, and I'll walk, be able to walk up the stairs that way. And he was on my side just in case I needed him. But at the end, he said, you know, you didn't need me at all. You did very, very well. Sue so, Ann, just an incredible person. Um, when she first started with me about two months ago, she walked probably about 200 feet continuously. Now she's up to 600 feet. She's doing incredible, really. And, and maintaining your independence, of course, bottom line. So now I'm going to introduce you to the next trainer. You know, we work in tandem. She's my partner, Chelsea Rojas, also the exercise physiologist. Chelsea, come on up here. Hi, guys. I am Nick's partner in crime. <laughs> I'm going to guys int introduce you guys to my fellow candidate, Michael Polivka. Come up, Michael. Michael, tell them a little bit about yourself. How old are you? Oh, I'm just, uh, I'm not used to using a mic. I usually use my <laughs> voice. Okay, just hold it towards your mouth. Okay. How old are you, Michael? I'm uh, 77, so I'm only uh, a little bit older. It's, uh, All right, Michael, I want to ask you something. How do you feel as Forever Fit benefiting for you and exercising with me? Well, I only have been in the program for only two, uh, two months. Two months. Yeah. two months. And how has it been and since? Since I have uh, really grown to like it. But first of all, what I want to say is uh, thank you for allowing me to say some things because this place really does deserve to have their uh, horn sounding, <laughs> telling everyone what this place is all about. Well, we appreciate I'm that, Michael. I'll tell you my story, and I'm sure there are plenty of people here that have yeah. their own story. All right. So, Michael, how has exercise benefited for you towards your goal that you initiated wanting to lean towards? Well, first of all, I was uh, also involved in uh, a physical training program, but it was uh, it's just a member of it being a gym, and I just did uh, f free weights, and uh, most weight lifters know about Do you feel like exercising with me has been progressive since you started? I found out that uh, I found unique ways of doing exercises. You have some of the best equipment that yes. I ever used. Oh. It's smooth, it operates, and it's people-oriented and also senior-oriented, because senior citizens need a little help. Not necessarily much, because uh, not only do we exercise, we can talk, too. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Michael. Chelsea <laughs> has a few words to say for us. Well, you've done an amazing job. Yes, we'll talk more. <laughs> I thought you were nervous, you're still on the show. <laughs> <laughs> this hey, is guys. a show, I thought it was just a, you know, <laughs> Thank you, Michael, you can take a seat now. <laughs> Thanks, Mike, that's great. Thanks, guys. Okay, on to the main event. Dana Cavalier spent 12 years with the New York Yankees organization, uh, many of those years as the director of strength and conditioning and performance enhancement, winning a World Series in 2009. Congratulations. In, yep. in addition, he was the recipient of the 2009 Major League Baseball Nolan Ryan Award. This award is given to MLB's top strength coach as voted by his peers. During his career, Dana has had the opportunity to train such greats as Alex Rodriguez, Derek Jeter, Mariano Rivera, Andy Pettit, no names, right? 
Justin Verlander, and more. Currently, he is a high-performance speaker and consultant to pro athletes, entrepreneurs, and business executives. Workforces and universities on lifestyle strategies to reduce stress, improve work-life balance, and most importantly, improve daily performance and outcomes. All of this is known as performance enhancement. So, without further ado, we're really proud and honored to have Dana Cavalia. All right, thank you guys. I'm not used to speaking with a mic because I'm a coach, so I'm used to really projecting, but I'll do my best. But um, thank you for having me. This is uh, a very unique experience, and um, if I fall short on words, I know I have a great co-host in the front row and Mike. So we had a great conversation before uh, coming out here. And you know, I'm supposed to be here to inspire you guys. And when I watch a video like that, I end up being the one that becomes inspired. So thank you very much. And, and thank you to um, Nick and Chelsea and the team for, for all that you do uh, for everybody here. So it's excellent. But uh, you know, in talking to Mike, he said something pretty interesting to me. And he said, you know, us seniors have done a lot for this country. And we ain't done yet. <laughs> pretty motivational words, right? So here I am you know, 34 years old, and I'm here to tell you guys about how to thrive over 60. Not only that, I have to teach you how to thrive over 70. I have over 80 here, over 90, and I, I hear that there's somebody here over 100, which is amazing. So th thank you for giving me the mic tonight. But, um, you know, you're wondering how a 34-year-old could actually come in here and talk to you guys about this, but I've had a pretty... Um, diverse career in, in the people that I've worked with. And, you know, that list talks about the, the high performers, the athletes, the Derek Jeters, and all these champions that I've worked with. But there's also a lot of names that weren't on that list. And they go from people that are just, you know, average folks that are in their 60s and 70s that are, that are trying to live pain free, you know, and trying to get through every single day um, with optimal performance. And, and that's really what I'm here to talk about tonight, is, is how to get you guys to your next place, and how to look at exercise, and how to look at training, and how to get the most out of it. But also keeping it really simple, because so many people complicate this thing, and it really doesn't need to be complicated. So um, I have some slides for you, too. And um, I, as a coach, I always like to start with a couple of rules. I know, it sounds fun, right? So let's see if we can. Cue those suckers up. All right, next slide, sir. Oh, I, I have the ability. OK, cool. Uh, I'm blinded by the light. <laughs> All right, so number one, no falling asleep. <laughs> number two, no head nodding. Number three, you got to laugh at all my jokes. We're off to a good start. Number four, you got to have fun. And number five, you have to engage. OK? so. Let me tell you about my first client. My first client was the toughest woman I ever dealt with. She was impossible. She came to me and she couldn't really walk. She had a really active life. She got to about 89 years old and all of a sudden she wasn't as active. She wasn't as mobile. She couldn't go out and rake the leaves. She couldn't go out and bag the leaves like she wanted to and carry them out to the street corner. She couldn't bake her biscotti cookies the way she wanted to. These were the things that were important to her. She never wanted to appear weak. She never wanted to appear disabled. She never wanted to be a burden on anybody. OK? So this one was 89 when we first started training. When we finished training, she was seven days away from 100, OK? And that's when she kind of called it quits on life. But that's OK. It was a pretty good run, I'd say. I'd be happy with that. But, um, it was a really special time that I got to share with this person because I got to see somebody who lived a really, um, uh, just a great life. You know, very active, never had, you know, had pain and dealt with it, but did a really nice job of, um, of never complaining, right? But again, when I saw this at 89, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to step in. You know, I'm going to school for this kind of stuff now. I have the ability to teach, much like Nick and Chelsea. And, and I can start changing lives. So let me start right here with this person. So 
Again, a lot of our workouts started sitting in a chair. Lifting your leg, lift your left leg, lift your right leg, extend your left leg, extend your right leg. Now, if this person was so difficult, because whenever I'd say right, she'd lift her left. Whenever I would say left, she'd lift her right. When I'd say sit down, she'd stand up. When I said stand up, she'd sit down. Why do we have to do this? I don't know why I have to do this, but she would continue to do it. But over the course of those 10 years, you know, most people are supposed to decline physically, they say, right? You're supposed to not be able to walk as well. You're not supposed to be able to head to the bathroom by yourself. You're supposed to decline because that's what happens when you age. But this 10-year or 11-year experiment that I was involved in um, with this client showed me that that wasn't the case, that you can actually accelerate your performance no matter where you are in your life cycle. Now, it's easier to do when we could change our thoughts and our mentality. And the first step of that is saying, hey, I'm getting older. And what does that mean? Oh, I'm getting older, I'm getting slower, I have to take a nap in the afternoon, blah, blah, blah. We have all these things that society tells us about getting older. But we can break through a lot of that. And that's what I was able to do over 10 years here with this person, OK? And I'm going to go back. And that was my grandmother. And we trained uh, together quite a bit. And uh, like I said, uh, about seven days away from 100. And, and it wasn't a physical condition. It wasn't a fall. Well, a, a physical condition as it related to her body. It was just a, um, it was a urinary tract infection that knocked her out. But as a coach and a grandson, I'm very proud to say that through our work together, she achieved all the benefits that I had programmed and predicted for her. So I put her up here tonight to show you guys somebody that, that did it and, and was one of my greatest clients in the end. And I talk about her with my pro athletes, and I'm talking about her with you tonight. So, all right, hold on. I got to go back. I have some stories to tell. <laughs> but what, what she taught me what I, was discovery, right? So here I am, this young guy, and I'm getting to work with somebody at this later stage in life. And I saw, OK, her balance wasn't that great when we first started. Her strength wasn't that great when we first started. Her conditioning levels, her cardiovascular fitness wasn't that great. Her energy maintained itself, but I knew that that would eventually start to decline if we didn't start training. But what it taught me was um, discovery in that I came up with a formula that I used for the rest of my career, which I call my five drivers of performance. So most people, when they think about being healthy, they think about eating right, and they think about, I got to do a little bit of exercise. But it's actually a very incomplete formula. I said it's mindset, it's training, it's fueling, which is your nutrition and eating well. Recovery, what are you doing to take care of your joints, your muscle? What are you doing to take care of all that after you train? And then influence, which I'll get to later in our presentation. But um, she looks like a pretty fun lady too. <laughs> but uh, um, we are what we tell ourselves. And that's going into our, we're going to head into our mindset piece. now. Um, I enjoy spending a lot of time in South Florida. I'm not a big fan of the cold weather. I went to college down at the University of South Florida, and I, I love the sun. They say it's very important to get vitamin D, so I try to go down there as much as I can in the winter to get as much vitamin D as I can and avoid the cold weather. And in doing that, when I go down there, I meet a lot of really special people, and I'm going to share some of their stories with you as we go along. But when it comes to our mindset, when I deal with high-level athletes, if you think of yourself as a failure or failing or not being good enough in any way, there's no way that you could have success. If you have success, it's by just random and, and it's more luck, right? But if you have a positive mindset and a positive attitude and a positive picture and a vision for yourself, that's the first part of being successful in anything that you do, right? We're relating it to our physical body and aging. So in one of my later slides, I'm going to talk about Dick Van Dyke. A lot of you guys know him, right? Legendary performer. He wrote a book um, uh, that I'm going to share with you later as well. But it talks all about your attitude and your mindset, right? So this is my grandfather. He's, uh, ladies, he is taken as of a couple years ago. He's uh, remarried at 92 years old. He lives in a villa in South Florida. Um, 
Him and his wife now live in separate houses. I don't know how he pulled that off, but he says he needs time for himself so he could think and read and do all the man things that he likes to do. And she likes to play cards with her girlfriend, so it works out great. But, so his name is Bob Simon. So I said, Simon says four things. And when I go down there, he always likes to share and impart his wisdom on his young, uh, handsome grandson. And he tells me, Dana, because sometimes I'll go down there because I'm coming from New York and I'm a little bit tired and worn out from work. And he says, listen, it's all about your attitude. Because I say, how do you do it? You live alone. He's got one lung. He's had emphysema. Uh, he was in the war. And, he can, and, that, and he, he's been dealing with that for probably 40, 50 years. And um, he just deals with it. You know, he goes in his room, he, he works with his nebulizer, and, and he just keeps on ticking. And my mother calls him the bionic man, because he'll have like a week where he's, you know, out of commission, and then all of a sudden he'll come back the next week and he's ready to go. So it's all about your attitude. Don't sweat the small stuff. You know, there's a guy, an author, that made quite a bit of money selling a book called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. And he said he lives by this. The serenity prayer, God grant me the serenity to accept things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. And basically, he summed that up and said, I, I focus on what I can control and anything else, I let it go. And then he hit me with this. And he said, Dana, and this, is, this was back when he was, before he got married, and he used to sit at the bar at the Bonefish Grill and have a scotch each and every night. And he told me, he said, always remember, Get up every day and brush your teeth. Do your hair. Put on a nice outfit. And always put on a spritz of cologne. Because you never know who you're going to meet that day. Wink, wink. And he ended up meeting his new wife at the Bonefish Grill <laughs> down in Boynton Beach. So and that was at 90 years old. And it's been a great uh, two-year relationship for them. So that's my grandfather. But there's another special lady who, I, if he didn't meet this woman, I probably would have try, uh, tried to set her up with my other girlfriend. Her name is Anita, and she's the woman with the white hair. And Anita is also 90 years old, and she's my swim buddy. We hang out in, my, in the pool at my parents' 55 and over community, and she lectures me on life. And she told me she's from Queens. I'm from Queens, so she has her little Queens attitude. And then she ended up moving out to California where she got to work for Redkin, and she was immersed in personal development. And she said, when I moved out to California, I learned all about personal development. I learned about mindset. I learned how I could make myself stronger by thinking stronger. And boom, that's what she hit me with. And she said, Dana, you see, I'm in the pool today, but I wanted to sit home this morning and just read my book. I had no desire to come to this pool today. But I said, damn it, Anita, put that book down and get out there. And she said, Dana, sometimes you got to coach yourself. And as you get older, you got to coach yourself more. And I said, damn it, I'm 34 and I'm already doing a lot of coaching. What's it going to be like when I'm 94? So that was a very important lesson that I learned from her. Now, she broke her hip. And she came right back. She broke her arm, and she came right back, and nothing stops this woman. And she's excited to be back down in South Florida. Her kid said, Mom, you got to come live with me this summer until your arm heals. And she said, OK, but as soon as it gets cold, I'm out of here. So she's back down there. Then I said, we just, you know, random conversation. I said, you know, sometimes I get stressed out about people. And she said, Dana, stop. Don't get stressed out about people. Every person out there has something great in them. You just need to find it. And when you do, amplify it. And every time you come across that person, that's what you'll think about. You won't think of the negative stuff. You'll think about the great thing that you found in them. And that's super important because you don't want to have negative anywhere in your life, especially as you get older, because life has its own circumstances that it presents to you. So it's important to don't let other people get you down. Amplify them and let them um, keep you up. And then she said, I said, you know, Anita, I don't know where I want to live. You know, do I want to live in Florida? Do I want to live in New York, New Jersey, California? And she said, listen, wherever you are, be there. 
because that is where you're supposed to be. So right now, here we are at CARE 1. This is where we're supposed to be. Awesome. This is where we're going to call home for the rest of this presentation. And some of you guys are going to call it home for the next several years, which is awesome. Take advantage of the amenities. Now, this is one of my favorite guys. And I know some of you may recognize him. But as a young man who liked to eat his grandmother's cooking and saw that he was a little loose around the midsection, I came across this guy. And he was a game changer. My mom said, you've you got to check out Jack LaLanne. So here I am, a young kid, doing all his exercises. I was fascinated by his leotard. Um, <laughs> you could not get away with that today. But um, what a champion. And what is so special about a guy like Jack is what he did to continue to challenge himself every single year. Right? So he never sat back and said, I'm having a birthday. I need to do something challenging. And what are we doing every day to challenge ourselves? So many of us get comfortable, we sit in this zone, and we just let things happen to us, and we don't realize that we can control things. We have control, but we need to prime and change our mind to take control. And that's what I feel Jack did a great job of. But when I see that video, which was very, um, like I said, motivating and inspiring for me, talking about Forever Fit, I said, Man, that is innovative to be able to provide seniors and people that are aging with a place that they could train exclusively to focus on building their armor, building their body up. How many people get older and all of a sudden you start to see them melt away? They become frail. They don't have the same muscle mass. Their skin starts to sag. You see that a lot. But this word in the middle, strength, can change that. Toning your muscle up. Many older folks are afraid of one thing, falling. So how do we prevent it? If you don't train for it, it's going to happen because you're going to have a decline. Your bone mass is going to become less. Your muscle strength is going to decrease. Right? You're going to become overall just weaker. And if you don't train these patterns over and over again and strengthen them, you're going to become weak. So, and that's reality. That's why if we focus on strength, it's an unbelievable thing. Because you can actually start to build your body back up. To be able to go from it being in a wheelchair to standing up and addressing the crowd and walking up the steps in church is a reflection of increased strength. I spelled that word wrong, by the way, conditioning. Okay? So, for those of you English teachers out here, it's my fault. It's my fault. But it's con I'm, con I'm condoning strength, exactly. I'm a, I'm a strength advocate. <laughs> but, but again, to have, a, to have a program where you can actually be monitored is really a special thing. Now, when I work with pro athletes, because I'll, I'll bring this back full circle as to um, you know, what I do with a lot of times during my day job, you know, a pro athlete would never train by themselves. These guys go to a gym, they don't even know what to do because they're so used to a coach programming for them. When we work with pro athletes, and this is why I was smiling while that presentation was going, because day one, we have an, a formalized assessment and evaluation. Where are you weak? Where do you need to get stronger? Where do you lack flexibility? What do we need to do for your nutrition? How do we clean you up overall? And boom, we put that program together. Every four weeks, we change the program. We change the program. We change the program after we reevaluate and reassess. Now, how many people, just even in here, go to a gym, a local gym, and do the same thing for months, for years? Or eventually you get so bored that you just stop doing it. Or you do this today, that tomorrow, and you're randomly just selecting different things to do for variety, not purpose. That's what we need to focus on. We need to give everybody purpose here. And we do that by evaluating and assessing you. Where are you? What do you need? And where are you going? And it's our job, <coughs> my job to motivate you, their job to get you there. And that's the whole idea. Where you are today is not where you'll be tomorrow. So if anybody in this room has a concern about their strength, their mindset, their attitude, 
and feeling overall more confident about their aging, you must get evaluated and assessed and realize that where you are today is not where you'll be tomorrow. Now, strength is the centerpiece of the program. But within that program, we have to focus on training balance, right? With our new strength, we need to focus on our balance. So if we do take a misstep, boom, we can catch ourselves. Much like an athlete, if he's running and there's a divot in the dirt or on the grass and his ankle rolls, he could still catch himself. We train all of these things. So you're going to see what I have is a continuum set up, right? So most people, as you age, feel like, oh, I'm in the rehab. You know, I have pain. I have to rehabilitate myself. Well, I'll tell you what. Two years ago, or three years ago now, Derek Jeter rolled his ankle and was walked off the field. He wasn't training strength, power, conditioning in his running. He was over here in the rehab. But the goal was to start him in the rehab and move him towards performance, where we can start strengthening and going over more of the performance stuff. And that's the whole idea here. So a lot of you may start on this side. And by a lot of you, I'm talking about everyone in the room. Because even if you're 30 or 40, you can still benefit from getting all your balance, coordination, flexibility, and mobility set. It'll decrease all your pain. And then you can start training more aggressively, OK, and achieve those goals. So one of the questions that I get is, Coach, how much should I train? You know, I'm 60, I'm 70, I'm 80, I'm 90, I'm 30, I'm 20. How much should I train? And with a pro athlete in the off season, we go two days on, one day off, two days on, two days off. So they're doing four days. But once the season starts, they go down to three. Now, it's a loaded question because for me, if you're not doing anything, let's start with one day. But then we'll get you to two and then we'll get you to three. If you think about it, you still, you're gonna have three days a week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you have Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. You still have more rest days than work days. And then as you go, you'll actually feel inspired and be more motivated to actually do things on those off days. And you'll see when I go to the power of influence in one of my later slides, you'll see how you can get other people to do things with you. So, my grandmother, like I said, Mildred, you know, when she was uh, trying to be cool, she called herself Millie. But um, what she taught me about falling was really interesting. You know, at certain junctures later in her life, she used to say, hold me, hold me, I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall, hold me. And all I would do is stand next to her. I wasn't even touching her. And all of a sudden, she had the confidence to walk. I didn't touch her. But what she taught me was, again, the power of the mind. So if we realize all of these things, that the first thing to go on us a lot of times is actually going to be our mind, we have to strengthen it. And we have to teach ourselves to believe that all things are possible if we're putting in the time and we're training. And with that feeling of strength will come the feeling of strength and the feeling of confidence. Okay? So I told you about that book. And I know um, there's probably a lot of avid readers here. Uh, my grandfather burns through more books per week than I've read in a year. Um, but this was a great one. It's called Keep Moving by Dick Van Dyke. And he said, I'm going to tell you the keys to staying young as he's dancing and doing his whole thing. He says, you got to keep moving. He says, don't really hang out with old people. You want to hang out with young friends. That's the key. And I think he just recently married a woman in his 40s, in her 40s or 50s. So. He said, also, make sure you sing out loud, because singing is very important. Make sure you dance. Eat a great diet and never act your age. He said, there's no reason to act your age. The rules of acting your age, we don't even know who created that rule. And he also said, never walk down the steps sideways, because you're going to get yourself all out of whack. So let's talk real quick. I'm just going to breeze in and out here and talk about nutrition, because I'm, I'm told to cover the whole gamut here. But this is something that I live by. Let food be thy medicine. So when it comes to diet, this is a system that I used to use with the Yankees. And I'll, I'll give you a little insight as to, as to this. It's basically a traffic light and saying, hey, anything next to the red, very limited quantities. So we wanted to keep our sugars and fats really low. Anything yellow, you could do moderate intake. You know, 
chicken, potatoes, rice, and again, we're dealing with higher level athletes, but I just wanted to give you a little peek as to, as to how we work with these guys. And then the free pass, you get as many vegetables, fruits, salads, low fat milk, yogurt, fish, eggs, and water as you want, okay? But our whole idea for fueling athletes, again, the highest performers, was to keep the foods that we gave them super clean. No additives, we wanted to keep everything as farm to table as possible um, and fill them up with nutrients so their body could recover and it wouldn't be bogged down with, with junk food. Now what I learned, interesting enough, is, is as people age, especially as they get 80s and 90s, is that sometimes you start to see their weight start to drop and cut. So when, with that being the case, we also want to talk about increasing calories for those folks so we can make sure that through our strengthening, there's enough uh, wood to build that strong house, okay? But I'm not going to go too deep into the nutrition because I know that there may be some folks here with you know, dietary allergies and things like that, and I don't want to dive too deep. But these are some, some food rules that I came up with. If it wasn't around 100 years ago, you should not eat it today. So anything that's packaged and you know, um, maybe is a color that you may not recognize in the food chain, uh, you may want to stay away from that. Fruits, vegetables, lean meats, fish, nuts, and seeds with permission, because I know like peanut allergies, the nut allergies and all that are big right now. Um, um, and I said, if you're, even if you're not hungry, like my grandfather says, I'm not hungry, I'm not hungry. This guy can go to dinner and eat six clams on a half shell and be full to the morning. It's, I've never seen that before, but um, we also tell him he's gotta get calories. So we started making him shakes that were calorie dense shakes, <laughs> nutrient dense and calorie dense to where he was able to get his calories in and, and maintain his um, masculine figure, if you will. <laughs> and then I always say, as one of my drivers, I talk about recovery. Because if we're gonna work hard, we also need to pamper ourselves and make sure that we don't have that soreness. We have to push that soreness out. And you know, when it comes to our athletes, massage has shown itself to be such a great um, driver of, of recovery and making people feel fresh every day, light in the legs, ready to play every single day. And um, that with acupuncture, stretching every single day, even deep breathing, and I put this number 444 because what people don't know about breathing is everybody says, take a deep breath. And that's great, but there's some different things you could do when it comes to breathing, depending on what you want to do. Like if I have to come up and speak at you know, seven o'clock. You know, I, I have a nine o'clock bedtime, just to let you know. But um, I, have to I have to amp myself up. So what I do is a different type of breathing pattern, which almost looks like hyperventilating. But I go in the Forever Fit room and I go <sighs> And you get your diaphragm to start moving and it actually wakes you up and shocks your body. But if I wanted to do something a little bit more of a stress relief, four, four, four means four seconds in, a four second hold, and four seconds out times 10, okay? So something like that is to actually dial down your stress. So actually telling people just take a deep breath, it's not really doing a whole lot. But when you start adding tempo, it changes the game for you, okay? So if you're ever in a stressful situation or you feel your mind freeze on you, four, four, four. And then you can make your decision and move yourself forward. But it's, it's a different way of thinking about breath. Again, with our athletes, hot baths, allowing the body um, to just relax. See, one thing that I also learned about your body's muscle tissue as you get older and just tissue in general, is that when you're young and you ever see kids, they fall, they bounce back up. They run, they hop, they, and they can just keep doing it over and over again. Their muscle tissue, I always say, is more like filet mignon or Kobe beef. It's very well, um, there's a lot of blood there, it's, it's, it's very um, healthy tissue. As you get older, it starts to turn into beef jerky. Okay, so you hear that crackling and that snap, and when you hit the floor in the morning, you're like, oh, do I even wanna do this? <laughs> but the, the key is to take care of your tissue as you get older. So the Epsom salts, the baths, the massage, chair massage, 
reflexology, acupuncture, all those kind of things really show some great benefits. My last driver out of my five is always influence, okay? So we had two great people stand up here today and talk about their experience. That's the power of influence. So somebody that can leave her wheelchair and leave assistance and go to a cane, she's showing somebody that's in a wheelchair, you can do it too. I did it. Same thing with the benefits that Mike saw. That's the power of influence. So wherever you are, that's the, the when you are training, if you could find a partner, a buddy, that when you want to hit snooze, they say we're going. That's the power of the buddy system, but it's mostly the power of influence. So as you make gains and you start to improve your physicality and you start to improve your mentality, that's when you become powerful. And that's when you can inspire other people. So that's all I have for you. But my goal is to inspire you guys to become champions. It's in everybody, no matter where you are. If you can't get up, find a way up. If you can't find a way up, find another way to get where you want to go. But you got to find a way. And remember, if you think you can do it, you can do it, and you will do it. Amen. Thank you. I'm also. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them unless there's something else on the program that, uh, yes? Well, I think it's not exactly what you're talking about, but the pictures nowadays, don't we still keep the complete game? I mean, what happened? We didn't know the pictures were so much. Yeah, so, 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 yeah, this is a little bit of a baseball question. He wants to know why the pitchers today can't pitch complete games. <laughs> well, you know, he, here's what I related to. The old world actually worked on farms and they, they, they were laborers. You know, today, um, they're not laborers. Um, there's, so, so what I have honestly found uh, um, is that their body is not, as, is not really built for that. It's not built to go the distance, mentally or physically. A lot of players, they do what they can do, but they, they, they don't have that, um, they never had to overcome much hardship, if you will. But now some players from places like the Dominican Republic and Venezuela, where the, the, the economic situations are a little bit different, you, you can see a little bit more guts out of them. That's part one, but part two on the baseball side is a lot of these organizations are also paying um, hundreds of millions of dollars, so they're trying to protect them as well. So. But Dan, I have a quick question. When, yeah. you, when you train some of these superstars, how do you not get, I guess, intimidate? Like, how do you treat them like a normal person? Yeah, well, you know what? I, I started with these guys when I was 19 years old. So I always say I was still in my formation years, and I was still in my own developmental years. And what I found was, you know, my first day that I, that I, I got the call, a week be before I got called to be an intern with the New York Yankees, I was a fan on the other side of the fence with my phone taking pictures and sending them back to New York. This was when I was at school in Florida. And um, my first day that I was on the field was, was somewhat magical. I saw these the most gigantic human beings I've ever seen in these pro athletes. And they were running by me and I couldn't believe what was happening. And um, you know, I, just got, I really just got used to it. And I realized that uh, they're just like us with a lot of talent. You know, they're, they're uh, you know, don't forget, these guys are hand selected, the best in the world at what they do. So you have to tip your cap to, to talent. Yes, ma'am. Are you still doing training, personal training, or are yeah. you just on the uh, speaking? Well, I, no, no, I, I do, uh, I actually do a lot of training. Like I started today at six in the morning. Uh, but yeah, I, I train, um, I still train because I want to be able to communicate as somebody that still does it, rather than somebody that used to do it. Are uh, you training pro athletes or, or all, anybody? Like, are you, do you prefer to train pro athletes or older people or anyone? I, I, how do I? I love working with the pro athletes because I'm used to it. Um, it's it's definitely a comfort zone for me, and um, but but I. 
Yeah, that, that too. The money's good there. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's like, quit beating around the bush. You want the cash. <laughs> but uh, no, no, that, that's, I, I enjoy the pro athletes. But actually, in my, I have a couple training facilities. And that's where we work with a lot of the general population. I have uh, two follow-up questions. Is that the World Series ring? Yeah, this is a 2009 World Series ring. Can I take a picture of it? Yes, you can, absolutely. <laughs> Anybody can that wants to. Yeah, that was, a, that was sad. I mean, he built the empire. Yeah, yeah. yep, absolutely. And Dan, if anyone wants to use your services, I'm just assuming you have a website? Yeah, I, I also, what I do, um, I do a blog every day. So you can go on my website, which is danacavalia.com, and you can register, and I, a lot of my writing, I write it, I don't delegate it, and I'll give a lot of videos as to what you can do for yourself. Again, focusing on those five drivers, whether it's mindset, fueling, recovery, and um, it's really just to give you information that's clear and easy to understand and, and, and for you to use most importantly. But again, for those that are in this area, you, have, you do have a great resource with the team here. I mean, I got a question. Yeah, um, yeah. I find it hard to stick with it. And I also find that every year that I get older, the things that I used to do the previous year to get back in shape yeah. don't work. And I then struggle to figure out, well, what's the next thing? So I might fall into the gimmick of this fad or that yeah. fad. What do I need to do? Like, when, when should I recognize that I need help? Yeah, so, so that I think you're there. <laughs> but, but what I would say is, I, you know, the power, the, I always go with this, the power of coaching, right? We can't do it all by ourselves. And what I've, what I've realized in working with these high performers, you know, the pro athletes, the CEOs and executives that have, uh, you know, achieved high levels of success, is that they schedule everything. And then what they do is they build accountability around it. So, Let's just say, you know, like I said, a pro athlete doesn't work by themselves because they feel like, listen, I'm going to have more days than not that I, I don't have the desire to train. And again, guys like Derek Jeter, as great as he is, listen, it's hard to train nine months out of the year and be consistent by yourself. And that's why, again, the influence, the buddy system, having a coach, being a part of a program, you almost have to turn yourself over, you know, and realize that hey, when it comes to, you know, working at CARE 1, that's where you're excellent, but there's people that can help you be excellent in other areas of your life. So I, the power of coaching, I mean, I, I work with a, you know, as recently as yesterday, a business coach, you know, to help me with the things that I'm weak at. Um, even as coaches, you know, in the training space, you know, I use my staff to help me, train me and work on me at different times because I can't do it myself. So you got to be comfortable turning yourself over to expertise uh, and realize what you can do and what you can't do. And it actually makes it easier for you because you won't have to wonder or think what you have to do today. They're going to tell you. So, so Dana, it sounds like you found your next client over here. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, Jeff, um, I go back to uh, the first thing you mentioned was mindset. And, and it's important to have you know, a good mindset. You know what? We used to use, um, well, we still do with, with the athletes, taking them back to positive times, using audio visual to show them what, you know, again, with the athletes, we have a lot of documented video of successful performances. With the geriatric population, again, it's almost taking them back to a time when they felt most successful and, or showing them pictures or showing them video and asking them, hey, how did you feel during that time? And we do a lot of this, um, it's, almost, it's, it's, it's almost therapy in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. to understand deeper levels of where, why are they thinking the way they're thinking. It's not just, I'm old, therefore I think negative. It doesn't work like that. It's, it's, there's events that take place that get them there. We need to kind of find out what were those events, what were you thinking while you were experiencing those events, and how do we get them back to that pre-event thought process, you know, and, and taking them back to, um, like with older folks, using music and, and taking them back to an era 
where they were thriving is, is also a very positive thing that you can use. Um, you know, but it's, it's person by person, and there all, are also some deep traumas that, that, that you need the help of, you know, professionals, you know, which I'm not on that end. We have time for one more question, folks. Yep. I've had a various physical therapists, and uh, they were good at the beginning, but as I progressed with them, I started to get increased pain. Of yeah. course, my arthritis started to become more full-blown. Right. I developed rheumatoid arthritis, I had osteoarthritis, and then I had a busy problem. Mm. So I got discouraged. I thought they wanted to do too much for me, and they wouldn't let me go. They said, you've got to keep coming. Yeah. And the only thing I do, I incorporate some of the good exercises they gave me. But then again, I slow off. I do it at my convenience. I yeah. I do it on the routine. And, and you know what? It's also, it's very common, too. I want to put this out there. There's people, they go to the gym, they start training, or they go and they do some sort of you know, PT or therapeutics, they get really sore and beat up, and they get turned off and they don't do it anymore. So what I always believed in is a ramp up period. This is not something where it's like, hey, I'm gonna do a six week program, this is great. This is something where we're gonna slowly work together as you and your therapist or you and your coach can work together more and more, they're gonna guide you, you know, through that process. But, I understand exactly what you're saying. And, and getting back involved, start slowly. And remember how I showed you about recovery? Recovery was something I had up there. For someone that has that joint pain and has a lot of that pain, massage and the therapeutic work would benefit you tremendously. Even if you start off training one day a week and a therapeutic day once a week, you know, pamper yourself a little bit as you're going through this process until your tissue starts to remodel itself appropriately and then you'll be in a much better headspace. Well, everybody, let's thank Dana. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And the last piece of business is the winner of our Yankee ticket contest. Lisa? So how this is going to work is it's a pair of tickets to the Yankee game of your choice. So you need to let us know what game you want to go to, and we will FedEx you those tickets. Um, so thanks, everybody. Just really thank you for coming. This is a great building. Um, I love having, you know, such a wonderful turnout. Dana, thank you for everything. Every one of you did receive a complimentary uh, Forever Fit workout session, so we would love for you to take advantage of what Michael and Sue Ann um, do with Nick and Chelsea, so please, you know, give us a call, shoot us an email. We're happy to offer you transportation should you need it to come and take advantage of a complimentary session in our gym, okay? So the winner of the pair of Yankee tickets is Debbie Rosen. Rosenweg. Grandma Debbie 18 at AOL.com. Is that you? Yeah! All right. Congratulations. They got all the answers right. Good job. All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming. We're available for tours if anybody wants to have a tour or ask any questions. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy.